Christ in the Lord Jesus Christ. This evening, looking at uh, the book of Daniel, we, uh, we looked at the aspect of every chapter basically considers God's plan and purpose. So our study this evening is uh, through the book of Daniel is about God's plan in establishing his kingdom on earth. A kingdom that he showed us back in Genesis 1 and 2. Colossians 1, for example, show, uh, tells us, uh, verses 15 to 20, we read that Jesus was in God's plan even before the creation. So basically from eternity to eternity, no beginning, no end. God created what he created because of Jesus and for Jesus and through Jesus. So that Jesus may be shown, may show God's creation and who God is and will be. Every chapter deals with how God is at the forefront and should be kept at the forefront of every aspect of life to those whom he has called. The book of Daniel is a statement of Genesis 3.15, basically. We are dealing with the seed of the woman and the seed of the servant, the thinking of man and the thinking of God. Every chapter includes God's plan, even in Daniel chapter 1 where it says that I will not live according to the flesh, said Daniel. And he stood his ground and God provided. So Jesus confirmed that saying by saying, I have come to do thy will, O Lord. So everything that we will be looking at this evening uh, has to do with God's plan and purpose. So we'll look at uh, what is prophecy. We'll look at uh, why do we keep an eye on current events? Which nations are involved? Which of these events and when these events happened? Where will these events take place? And how will these events uh, come about? So if we look at prophecy, what is prophecy? It's the foretelling. A prediction of what is to come. Something that is clear, uh, declared by a prophet, especially a divinely inspired, inspired prediction. Now, predicting actual accounts in the future, uh, if the prophecy did not materialize, the prophet was considered a false prophet. Now, we know for sure that Daniel was not a false prophet because so many of his prophecies have been materialized so far. So why look at current events for encouragement? To keep ourselves focused, to keep our faith strong as we see these events uh, occurring. Constant, it's a constant reminder that God's plan is a living plan. It's, it's ongoing, isn't it? Every time we wake up in the morning, we turn on the radio to, look at the, to listen to the news and some events are occurring especially nowadays at the rapid fire, nonstop. There is a purpose to living. It, it gives us that purpose to ensure God's plan is alive through us. When we talk to somebody, any events, um, we need to remind or to use the current events when we have discussions with people, no matter what the discussion. I always try and strive to bring the current events into your discussion so that people are made aware. So who or which nations are involved? Well, the images from Daniel spell out the key nations which God is using to accomplish his plan and we'll be looking at those. Other contemporary prophets provide additional information, for example, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and then we'll look at those. So looking at the overall God's plan, We'll be looking this evening at Daniel to our time. <clears throat> so looking at the first image and 
like we, we were talking earlier, when we are looking at these things, when we are discussing with people, we need to consider where are we in these events? At what stage, at what phase are we at? Well, we know that this is real. This is true. Because God tells us in Daniel, and Daniel tells us that what I am telling you, Nebuchadnezzar, it's true. Now, first of all, let's look at uh, what these uh, symbols signify. Jesus signified his message through symbols and parables. And you look at Revelation. The beasts are political powers. The horns are kings, emperors, or rulers. Stars are lower powers. The lamb or, is Christ or appearing like Christ. The woman in symbology is the church or the ecclesia. And the harlot or prostitute is a wayward church. So on the positive side, the multitudinous bride. So that would be the woman, the church. The sea or the, or the masses, the nations. Uh, the serpent is the thinking of the flesh, human nature. So these are the symbols that uh, when we see these, we'll understand. So what will these, when will these events happen and when, where will these events take place and how will these events come about? So in Daniel 2, 7, uh, we are told that there shall be a time, times and a half, a time in, Jew, uh, in Jewish uh, reckoning is 360 days. So if you look at the uh, a time, which is 360 and then times, we double that. And a half of the 360 gives us 1260 days equals 1260 years. Because we know that in God's plan and God's thinking, the day is a thousand years or is a year. So in Daniel 7, the same period of time is mentioned, the prophecy concerned the papal oppression of spiritual Israel. And we know that that is in process. Here, however, the period has a relationship to the scattering of the people, the holy people prior to fulfillment of the wonders and the manifestation of Michael the Prince. So taking the desolation of Jerusalem as a commencement, when the mosque of Omar, the way I agree with, as it is called, was first built as a wooden structure on the site of the temple. So in AD 637, 638, 1260 years concluded in AD 1897, 1898, which saw the birth of Zionism at the Zionist conference in Basel, Switzerland. So already we see some of the signs have materialized, some of the prophecies. So this period saw the establishment of Islam in which was thought the subjugation of the Jews and the development of the Arab power under the standards of Mohammed. And we'll see shortly that they were not the only ones. So if we look at the summary in Daniel's uh, three time period in chapter 12, this is uh, from the, uh, the book of Daniel Expositor. They have uh, several examples of what if scenarios. So summary in Daniel's uh, three period. So if we look at the AD 53 where the decree of the emperor of Justinian appoints the bishop of Rome as the head of the church. So from that period, we have the 533 plus the 1260 plus the 1290 and the 1335. It gives us these three uh, points, French Revolution, the Greek independence from Turkey, and the papacy loses temporal power. In AD 608, which is a degree of focus, appoint the Pope as universal bishop. If we do the three mass, we have the papal, the papal loss of temporal power that we looked at briefly. Jewish revival of Zionism under Herzl. Conclusion, World War II and establishment of Israel and Russia as significant powers. 
In AD 622, the commencement of Islam religion by Mohammed and uprise of Ottoman Empire. So in, if we do the, the bat, we have that Britain occupies Egypt and becomes king and uh, opposing Turkey, conclusion of the Italian-Turkey war and the pact of Rome with the EEC is formed. And looking at two other ones, we have AD 627, where Jerusalem conquered by the Saracen Arabs. If we do the math, now we have the period of intense turmoil leading to the creation of Zionism. Again, that's very consistent. Jerusalem freed from the Arab control. Cuban crisis laid basis for opposition between US and USSR. AD 638, the first building of the mosque of Omar that we talked about. So we have the revival of the Jewish hopes again, 1898 time frame. the development of the anti-Semitism in Europe and Yom Kippur war witness to Israeli power. So such signs reveal the work of the Elohim preparing this generation for the coming of Messiah and the glorification of the faithful and the establishment of the kingdom. So all of these dates are meaningful and they all lead to the nation of Israel being established. So again, we have these time periods and in, in this uh, case, we have Revelation 21, which is the key. So looking at this uh, uh, picture again from Daniel 2, we have Daniel 2 gives us the nations of the world, the major powers building up. And then in Daniel 7, he now puts animals to it. And he tells us which who the kings are and how powerful they are. So we have the king of, uh, or the lion, which represents Babylonia. And we have the bear, the Medo-Persian. And here the bear has three ribs in its mouth. And we know that through history, that those three ribs would be three kingdoms that they uh, destroyed at that time or incorporated into their kingdom at that time. So we had the uh, the kingdom of Lydia, the kingdom of Babylonia, and the kingdom of Egypt. They consumed these three after uh, when taking power of uh, Babylonia. Then we have the leper, which is uh, Greece. So we have the leper with the four wings. And we have Rome. And then we have the dividing of the kingdoms between the, the two legs. So how do we know the event will happen? <clears throat> and he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that now that no understanding. He really revealeth the deep and secret things. He maketh what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. So God makes it happen. And if we understand God, know God, love God, we know, and because of what we've seen happen in history, we know that things are true. In Jeremiah 27, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, and by my great power and by my outstretched arm, I have given it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. And in Daniel 2.25, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, uh, the iron, the brass, and the clay, and the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump, 
and the tree roots. Thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou shalt have known that the heaven do the heavens do rule. So Daniel, we and looking at these two examples, he tells them that it is sure and it is for certain. And in Daniel 4, where we have the large tree, which is cut down, and for a time, Nebuchadnezzar is changed and it has a heart of an animal. Uh, he, when he comes back out of that seven seasons of that event, he confirms that God is the only God, the true God, and that he realizes that he needed to have humbled himself before this God. In verse 37 of 4, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. And he puts into power whom he will. And we have an example of that in, uh, in modern uh, era. Living example today, which is uh, the president of the United States, Mr. Uh, Mr. Trump. And Mr. Trump, I like to use him as a positive example of how God puts whom he will into power. Because since he has come into power, a lot of the things that need needed to be to occur or to to begin to happen have begun to happen and we'll look at uh, some of those in a bit and in the days of those these kings shall the god of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God had made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation sure. Now, this is what is important here this matter in daniel 4 the um, the other uh, prophecy that he or dream that he re resolved for nebuchadnezzar he says this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it it to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basis of men and what we have seen with the example of our, of our uh, president is that he has surely displayed um, this type of uh, character. So in Daniel, uh, in the NIV, it says decision is announced by messengers. So these watchers, these messengers are angels. Um, we read about this evening in Daniel 12 where Daniel is, um, is listening to uh, Michael uh, stand up, the great prince. And then he sees two other individuals, one on each side of the river. And when we look at these individuals, because these watchers that we, we, talk, we hear about and read about, they are the ones that have been assigned to make things happen. They are bringing these prophecies about. And when we, uh, Daniel was waiting for assistance, we know that the angel said that he had been dealing with the king of Persia for 21 days and he needed help from, uh, from his supervisor, if you will, from one of the, the mighty angels to give him help. So what, what was he trying to make happen? Was he trying to make uh, the king of Persia decide how he was going to tackle um, uh, Babylonia or Lydia or Egypt? 
was he trying to make him make the decision to go in a certain direction and putting things in place so that he could see what was happening and make the right decision. We know that they are working in the kingdoms of men to make things happen. And we need to understand and realize that they are working with us and we need to let them work with us. So looking at um, prophecy, we talked about the fact that um, there would be, it was contemporary with Ezekiel and Jeremiah. And in Ezekiel, uh, we know that da when Daniel was uh, so, just on trying to understand some of these things that were occurring, had he been reading some of, his, of Ezekiel's work and coming across across this chapter, he knew that it would be fitting into some of his prophecies. So he was trying to understand it. And I believe this is where, at the end, um, he is told that this is not for now. This is for the future. And you cannot uh, put it in writing at this time. Because it was not his role to put it in writing. It was the Lord Jesus Christ's role to put it in writing. Because all of these symbols are tied into Revelation. And Jesus completed the picture and it was his role to execute the picture also. So Daniel was not able to uh, have a see at that time what it was uh, what was those prophecies, the conclusions were going to be. And in Ezekiel 38, we read that the angels, uh, God through the angels, says, I will go up to the land of unwalled Venus. So he says he will give, he will put an evil thought into the mind of uh, Gog. I will go up to the land of the un unwalled villages. And I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, and all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations. So we know that the angels make this happen. They, they bring about some issues allow the people that they have in the power to make the right decision. And we know that that will be one of our tasks in the future. We don't know what our individual role, individual roles will be, but we know that we will be some of these angels. And it continuing in Ezekiel 38, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, Set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them. And say, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Now, who is saying this to, to, uh, to Gog? And that is the son of man. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, and what would create somebody like, or such a leader that has such high regard for themselves, such pride, what would cause them to want to come down? Um, so it appears that they may have been backing away from something. And the son of man says, to go from the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them and say, thus, the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So if you said somebody, some, something like that to Mr. Trump, for example, you would get some mighty repercussions. And this is what, in my mind, is bringing this power down 
because he said, I'm against you and I guarantee you that you're not gonna win. So I will turn thee back and put hooks in your jaws and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses, horsemen, and all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, great company, bucklers, shields. I mean, he is so powerful in his own mind that I'm so confident. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya. I mean, he already he has surrounded uh, Israel. He has surrounded he, he has surrounded the people that he's coming to fight. And, and then he also has Gomer and all his bands, the house of Pagarma and the North Quarters and all his bands, many people with him. I mean, he is so confident that he would take on anything that he is told. But obviously he's told that he won't be able to. And that is really upsetting him. So when will they occur? And I stood upon the sand of the sea in Revelation 13, 1, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and 10 horns, and upon his horns, 10 crowns, and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. So the power is transferred to um, the Revelation 13, 2. And the beast, which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And power it passed on to verse 12 and he exercised all the power in the, of the first beast before him and caused the earth and then which dwell there in the worship of the first beast was deadly wound was healed. So this is the flow of all of these. So it goes from Daniel to Revelation. And we see what we were looking at was in of the Daniel 7. So in Revelation 12, 3, and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold, the great red dragon having seen seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his head. And this confirms the formation, if you will, of Europe. Now, when I was saying earlier that, you know, the, uh, that Mr. Trump did his job is Europe was in a consolidation with the world. Well, for example, all of the uh, uh, internationalists or globalists, the, the previous presidents of the United States were in league with Europe. I mean, they were assisting Europe. They were always helping Europe. And Mr. And, uh, Mr. Trump <clears throat> sorry, came in and said, no more. I'm not going to give you uh, $40 billion to pay your rent. You pay, pay up yourself. You ante up. You want to be at the table, pay up. And he said, if you don't, I'm, I'm out of here. And, and he did do that. And now Europe, they're saying, well, the U.S. are not going to help us. Uh, they're looking at China, who is ri a rising star right now, becoming extremely powerful. And they're saying, well, we don't really like them either. And so they've been looking at, okay, we've been talking about having our own army. Now we need to have, make it happen. And they are being forced to be self or to be independent, if you will, self-focused. So the European has been frequently depicted as a woman riding a beast. It's having echoes of the book of Revelation, isn't it? And um, above we have the graphic from the Time magazine and left we have the Euro, Euro coin from Greece, which is again, the lady riding a beast. And on the right, we have the German magazine. And this is dated in the year 2000, but now more than ever, they are, forced to become that. 
and here is Good Morning Europa. So this is when uh, Europe was um, being established. Uh, you, and here in the um, German caption here, it says, we are ready. Our continent is in, will be in good shape, uh, even if the US attack us, we'll be able to defend ourselves. And more than ever. So here, the, uh, the European Parliament and, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power for as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength onto the beast. And we know that I don't have the slides here this evening, but uh last year there were uh, some of the european leaders said to the pope that he would be the only one that they would like to lead them if there was anything uh, occurring because he is the one that has the wisdom to operate and they would follow him so they would give them or him their power and thus they would be given strength accordingly. So here we have the uh, when Europe um, and their slogan is still um, Europe many tongues, one voice. And if we look if we look at Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel, uh, there it was one language, one purpose, one voice. And God made sure that he separated that or confused them, which would not, uh, they would not be able to work them together because it's also, it was the language, but also the purpose. So because they could not understand each other, they decided that they could not work uh, with one purpose. But the poster that EU has produced uh, the Council of Europe says many tongues, one voice or one purpose. So now they, in fact, are going back and becoming Genesis 11 again. So these powers, we know that the, the moon, the stars and, and the sun are considered uh, na nations and powers in, 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 uh, in God's thinking. So now they are set to begin. So the building of Babel is reestablished. So, and the Lord said, behold, this people is one and they have all one language and thus they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. So this is reoccurring. So when they find their footing and they still have issues and, 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 and I believe that there's still too many, too many countries. So shortly it will be going down to the few strong and already the, uh, the powerful ones are rising to the surface. And we have um, Germany again and France which is rising and we know that germany has been involved in the previous two world crises and germany will be at the forefront of this one also with russia so one way or the other they will be involved so again europe many tongues one voice one purpose they will um when uh, forced to, they will respond. And there's the EU Parliament building, incredible. So when we were looking at uh, <clears throat> the information earlier, when we looked at the fact that in 1887, that Ertel, um, to work on the Zionist movement. And 
they said that the, they will emigrate thither as agriculturists and traders in the hope of ultimately establishing their commonwealth. So it began way back there to, for them to start going into the, back into Israel. However, it did not materialize strongly until after the Second World War. In this, the Second World War, would, uh, or I should say Israel, uh, they decided to establish or the, the um, United Nations approved Israel becoming a nation back in November 15, 1947. And they did not declare themselves a, a, a country until uh, 19 or May 15, 1948. But they were already, uh, if you will, a nation back in the fall of 1947. And interestingly enough, um, Russia abstained because if they would have voted against, they would, Israel would not have been uh, allowed to become a, uh, a country. So the angels were working on that day. So we read, the mountains of Israel, of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations that dwell in the midst of the land. So again, in Ezekiel, uh, we see that Israel was being prepared for Ezekiel 38. So in 1967, we know that the Jerusalem finally became um, or was taken by Israel. It became theirs again. And this is another thing that uh, our Mr. Trump did. He established, he decided after 30 years, because 30 years ago they decided that um, the U.S. Embassy could be in Jerusalem, and they had not made it happen yet, but he did. So prophecy fulfilled in our time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. So they are back in the land, and things have been unstable, I guess, if you will since that very time but lately it has been a lot more stable but they have there, there are some things afoot that will that may cause some things to be less stable however now that uh netanyahu has a has uh, signed an agreement with uh with um with Dedan, Sheba and Dedan, it is incredible how another piece of the puzzle has come into play. So in Ezekiel 38, son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. So Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his band, the house of Tagarma and all the north quarters and all his bands and many people with them. So we know that these, all of these pieces of the puzzle are virtually in place. <clears throat> and it's just a matter of time. And we do not know what the trigger will be, but I believe from what we talked about and looking at this, the son of man, that <clears throat> when the Lord returns, which the indications are that it is very close, that will absolutely be the trigger. So again, looking from the, it says that come from your place out of the other most parts of the north, you and many people with you. So he's saying, come on down, we'll look after you. So all of these countries, all of this area, 
everything is in is in place because we know that Russia is working very heavily with Libya and Ethiopia and they have Persia and they are in league with so their left flank is covered because they are in league with uh, China so there's there's no issues for them they are basically ready to come down and the only thing that they don't have solid yet is EU. But they can and can force them to play along because they are supplying most of their oil. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against gold. And say thus saith the lord god behold i am against thee o god chief gog chief prince of meshach and tubal so can, again can you imagine you tell that to those people what did they will do there's only one thing to do they will come down unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty, and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And it is, this is consistent scripture, and at the time is coming when they will be brought down, and there will be a battle and times of tribulation that man has never seen before and as prophesied by daniel that there will be a time that even since the nations were created that there had not been issues like this before and it shall come to pass in that same time when gob shall come again the land of Israel, said the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face, for in my jealousy and in the fury of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowl of the heavens and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against them throughout all my mountains, said the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. <clears throat> so the time is coming when God will accomplish what he has said from the very beginning that he will do. He has uh, established to glorify his name, just like he did in the days of Egypt. And that was the whole purpose. <clears throat> and we know that Pharaoh, when God removed, released his people from Egypt, that Pharaoh was not asked if he wanted to play the role. Pharaoh was made to play the role. And God hardened his, his heart until he destroyed them. And this is the same thing that will occur now. This is coming that God puts into power whom he will, and he puts people who will do good for his purpose and people who will not do good for his purpose, but will do good for his plan. So Pharaoh had no decision to make. It was always going to be, you will be destroyed. Gog from the land of Magog has no decision to make. It will be destroyed because God said that he will destroy them. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstone, fire and brimstone, Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord, just like he did with Egypt. And that was the purpose. 
God said, when I'm through with you, the, the world will know and the world will shake. And we know that with Rahab, this is what saved Rahab and her family because they knew. And for 40 years, they were thinking about this. And then when the people of Israel came to their border, they were afraid. And the same thing will be in the near future. And that would be the springboard, if you will, for um, the new kings and priests of the Lord to go forth where they are given their nations and their cities and their people. And just like the spies, if you will, that Joshua sent into the land, Rahab was willing and able, and she had thought about things, and she understood, and she was willing to hear. And this is what will be occurring in the future. So the first state of the crisis uh, of, of Christ's victory is the Gentile power broken to pieces in the Holy Land. So the European horns take counsel together against Christ, but are broken. <clears throat> That's the second stage of the victory. Because the first stage is Russia coming down and being destroyed with all of his friends. And then Europe will be um, fighting for the second phase. In Ezekiel 39, verse 6, And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles and they shall know that I am the Lord. So again, he will make sure that they know and they are afraid. Verse seven, so will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. I have been letting them, the world pollute my name for 6,000 years. It will not be anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is come. It is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. I have been talking about it. If you have heard, please respond. If you did not, we know what will happen. And this is how Rahab saw it. And Rahab understood it. And Rahab responded. Psalm 2. And he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. So from even before creation, this is what God saw. This is what God wanted. This is what God planned. And this is what God made happen. Ask of me and I will give thee the, the, nation, the heathen for thine inheritance and the other most parts of the earth for thy possession. And our Lord will ask when he is told that it is time. Revelation 17, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. This is what Daniel had talking from the very beginning. This is from the first image that he was shown to explain to Nebuchadnezzar. And this back to Daniel 2, that the stone cut out from the mountain without hands will crush the feet and will take the statue down. Once and for all, Genesis 11 repeated, 
God confused and destroyed basically their plan, their approach to things, and he is going to do it again. But he will be more, much more costly in lives this time. Daniel 12, 1, that we read this evening, and at that time shall Michael stand up, this is our Lord Jesus, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine in the brightness as of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So here we have the begin, the conclusion, the end and the beginning, if you will. The end of a kind of people and the beginning of another kind of people. So we, when we look at the signs of the times, we need to learn these verses by heart and maybe put them on our wall and read it every day because we want to be those who are awoken to everlasting life, not to everlasting contempt. We want to be those that they turn many to righteousness and become as stars forever and ever. We have been called <clears throat> for this purpose. So our role is to make this happen. So in summary, <clears throat> what's the real reason for these prophecies? To direct mankind to understand God's plan, to realize the error of their ways, and that God, in order to escape the calamities of the end days, so they need to turn to God. When these things begin to come to pass, for lift up your head and watch for your redemption, God and I. It's not just for us that we need to know these verses and to, we need to say that to our friends, to our neighbors, to our enemies, to anybody, whether they listen or not, that's not our job. Our job is to speak up. And it is the Lord's role and his angels to have the people they want to respond positively. They do, we do the sowing, they will do the reaping. Most people are not prepared for Jesus' return. For a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell in the face of the whole world. It will be a trap for most. But Lord willing, we have spoken to many and when they start seeing these things, we, they will come and ask. So Peter wrote, save yourselves from this untoward generation. God told us 2,500 years ago that his Messiah would establish God's kingdom on earth and would rule in righteousness. So when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. That is salvation. So what is the real reason for the prophecies? God told us that his Messiah were to be established. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven and with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God wishes that none should perish. In Galatians 3, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor, nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And they were, 
his uh, Jesus of all disciples are asking him, when is this kingdom? Uh, where is the kingdom? And he says, the kingdom's already in you. It's already here. So if we have accepted the Lord, if we have looked at the Lord and um, become the Lord's through the waters of baptism, we have the kingdom in us now. So our challenge is to live as if we have the kingdom of God now. And are the young people who are considering and looking and learning have to strive to put on that mindset to be living as if they are in Christ already. And at one, at one point make the decision to literally and actually become is so genesis 1 confirms that god created the earth to be inhabited by people in his image and likeness and this is what he will have that's the bottom line he wants us to believe him he wants us to understand what he expects from his creation and especially to glorify his name Thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself has formed the earth and made it. He had established it. He created it, not in vain. He didn't do it for nothing. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. And he knew this before the creation and he already knew how it was going to end. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we need to believe everything that we have been told about the Bible, about the word of God, about his plan and purpose, and live according to what we know and according to his plan and purpose. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, we read in Isaiah. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. And in Revelation 1, we read, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and had made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So brothers and sisters, young people, friends, now is the time to continue walking in his path, to put on his name, or to learn about his name. Thank you.